stream anytime, anywhere with the free PBS app. Some have called Unity Temple in Oak Park Frank Lloyd Wright's masterpiece. Wright wowed visitors from the moment they entered with an age-old architectural trick called compression and release. We entered the lobby from outside and we're already being compressed oh down God, into the space. Look how low that is. Now as we're entering the cloister, the ceilings get lower and yeah, darker. I can almost touch it. Yeah, and it's compressing you down and then go ahead. Okay. You get released into the sanctuary. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> And Frank Lloyd Wright called this his noble room. So you're being you know, risen up almost to nobility and it just opens right up and yeah. so much to look at. The noble room? The noble room. That sounds like Frank Lloyd Wright. It does, yes, it does. Modesty. <laughs> He's a very modest man, yeah. <laughs> and what year was this built? So it was finished in 1908. 1908. And, uh, he designed it more in 1906. So let's put that in context, like what do houses of worship look like in 1908? Well probably what a lot of them look like today, more gothic, you know, more traditional steeples, um, heavy, you know, stone and mosaics. But uh, the minister at the time, he wanted something different. And to reflect the Unitarian values and ideals of community. So how does this reflect Unitarianism? Well, as you can see, we are here in the round. Um, the seating is uh, not your traditional church yeah. seating of front to back pews. So that way you can see people that you're communing with. And um, community is, is really important in Unitarianism. So talk about the materials in here. You know, it's, it's not a, a typical color palette for a house of worship, I don't think, right? Here, he really wanted to bring nature in. And he said he wanted the sanctuary to feel like it was a happy, cloudless day at any point in time. The soft yellow that he brings in really reflects the light. And I love how he brings the light in because we don't have any windows that are at human eye level. Right. So with the clear story windows, you get a lot of indirect light. Up at the top. Up at, and then of course, the beautiful stained glass windows in the ceiling, there's 25 of them filter light down and that's supposed to represent um, nature and like an abstracted flower so while you're standing here you can almost feel like you're sitting underneath you know a field of flowers so the outside of the building is made of concrete and that was very revolutionary right it was unity temple is one of the first public buildings to use concrete in in this way it was poured in place and then when we moved to the inside there is some concrete but also plaster yeah. and there is a whole technique that he used of um, creating texture in the plaster uh -huh. and when he painted it you could see especially once you get up to the ceiling lights and darks and a yeah. kind of stippled finish and it really is almost suede like even in the skylight well there, you can really see it. Absolutely. Wright lived and worked in Oak Park for 20 years. The village has more Wright buildings than any place in the world. His prairie style matured here, as did his reputation for arrogance. He could rightfully claim to be the greatest architect of his day, but not the greatest at engineering durability into his designs. The years took their toll on Unity Temple, by 2000, it was named one of the 10 most endangered buildings in Illinois. And this building is pretty difficult to maintain, you know, like a, a lot of large buildings, but being that there's a lot of Frank Lloyd Wright buildings. A lot buildings. of Frank Lloyd Wright buildings, <laughs> yes. In fact, um, a, I think it was a few years before the restoration, a big such a section of the ceiling had fallen. So there was a lot of patching. Um, and then more aesthetically, a lot of the paint wasn't quite right. All this beautiful stippling and the texture had been painted over so many times. What was done in the in the course of the restoration? Um, yeah, if you can imagine, this whole building was wrapped in plastic and scaffold everywhere. Every single piece of trim work was removed and cataloged and refinished and reinstalled. It ended up being about $25 million to do the full comprehensive restoration. With restoration completed, Unity Temple was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site, along with seven other Wright buildings across the country, putting it in a league with the Egyptian pyramids, the Great Wall of China, and the Vatican. <laughs>